Okay, my topic today is about gender fair language in pursuit of gender equality. So our learning objectives include understand the nature of language as a vessel of culture, explain the role of language in reinforcing gender bias and discrimination, Number three, know the functions of gender fair language in attaining gender equality. Next is explain the institutionalization of gender fair language. And lastly, know the various ways on how to make communication gender fair in accordance with the Civil Service Commission Circular Number 5 Series of 2005. First, culture, language, and communication. We know that language covers a very wide area of human life and behavior, and language is manifestly the most important. Language is a vessel of culture, and it reflects the deep sentiments, beliefs, and value systems of a nation. Language is a tool of communication and reinforces current and introduces new values. In this slide, you will see the iceberg model of culture by uh, Selfridge and Sokolik, also mentioned in French and Bell in 1979. I chose this model because that is what language is, like the traditional uh, notion of what culture is. Culture in this uh, regard, being represented by language, include the word, tonality and body language and gestures that we see when a person communicates. But this is only the tip of the iceberg. Submerged in what you don't see is the sight of the person as a member of a national culture. And this includes the, the beliefs, values, biases, prejudices, experiences, fears and dreams and feelings. The Words and tones we hear, the body language and gestures we see, represent the deep structure of our culture. Our beliefs, values, biases, prejudices, experiences, fears, and dreams, and feelings. Our original language, in essence, bears the totality of our beliefs, values, biases, and experiences as a people belonging to a nation. Each word carries the essence of or spirit of a race. We are talking about culture. Culture is the material and non-material product of social interaction that sets a nation's identity. It is defined by Hofstede as the collective programming of the mind, distinguishing the members of one group or category of people from another. This category can refer to nations, regions within or across nations, ethnicities, religions, occupations, organizations, or gender. Culture covers a wide area of human life and behavior, and language is manifestly a part and probably the most important part of it. So language plays a very important set of functions. It is a tool for adaptation. Language and culture are interlinked and inherently connected. Language is the vessel of culture. It is the main tool of socialization. It reinforces norms and it is also a tool to change culture. So as you know, communication is comprised of spoken language, written communication, and other forms of communication. Language and gender norms and culture are interlinked and inherently connected. Language reflects a society's gender culture. Language is the main tool of gender socialization and it reinforces norms. It is also a tool to advocate gender equality. We have defined gender relations as the ways in which culture or society defines rights, responsibilities, and identities of men and women in relation to one another. You've learned about the word patriarchy. Patriarchy is a general structure in which men have more power over women. So here we discuss in passing the theory of masculinity by Connell. According to him, there are four types of masculinity. Hegemonic, complicit masculinity, subordinated masculinities. So there are these 
four types of masculinities. Hegemonic masculinity is the most popular one, refers to the most socially valued. So language is inherently connected to the reinforcement of masculinity in society. Sexism in language is prejudice or discrimination based on one's sex or gender. Sexism is mostly biased against women and girls. Sexist stereotypes reinforces the idea that one gender is intrinsically superior to another. So sexist language promotes the masculine ideology. Here, going back to Connell's uh, theory of masculinity, hegemonic masculinity, which is the basic idea of what is macho or what is masculine and what is ideal set of characteristics for males, these are reinforced through gender socialization, where power inequality results from gender relations and this will have an impact on the various aspects of social life and which will reinforce the so-called patriarchal society. So these uh, masculinities that vary across time, society and culture and the individual are based is the essence of the theory of masculinity by Connell published in 2005. So hegemonic masculinity legitimizes men's dominant position in society and justifies the subordination of the common male population and women and other marginalized ways of being a man. And here we have another theory of masculinity. This one is based on Hofstede's theory. We have talked about the, this theory in class that it is a result of factor analysis to examine the, the survey of the employee of IBM, which is a multinational company. So this is a continuous study that produced a six-factor index that measures the various cultural dimensions, which now is a basis for categorization of nations based on these cultural dimensions. The six cultural indices showing the varying strengths of the values, which may be presented in a continuum from strongest to weakest and vice versa. So cultural sensitivity aims for intercultural communication to be more effective. To explain further the six intercultural dimensions of Obsted, include femininity and masculinity being one of them but they also include power distance individualism uncertainty avoidance long-term orientation and indulgence versus restraint index but we will focus on the theory of masculinity and femininity for hopstead masculinity is defined as a preference in society for achievement heroism assertiveness and material reward for success so hopstead holds that societies exhibit masculinities at varying degrees the opposite reveals femininity so this graph represents the degree or the continuum of masculinities across the countries which were involved in the survey. The lighter shade of red, is it red or pink, um, represents femininity and the darker ones re represent extreme form of masculinity. The Philippines is somewhere in the middle but more of masculine. Well, learn more about the Learn more about the theory of masculinity by Hofstede by listening to the links provided in your page. Let's now proceed to sexist language reinforcing bias and discrimination. So communication laden with masculine values tend to sustain patriarchal ideology and they show gender inequality. So here we see that uh, sexism may occur in ordinary communication, in media, in leadership, and in education. So for ordinary communication, we see the stereotypes and the language that discriminate based on gender. This is the language that oppresses and limits the person's lives because of their gender. So we see it in the form of metaphors. So objectifying persons, for example, women as referred to as 
fresh tilapia for males, hot dogs, bundok, blaklak, etc. And jokes that promote sexism are the green jokes, so-called, and the macho jokes effectively reinforce the macho culture. And songs with double meaning, for example, bulaklak, uh, sung by female sexy groups promote uh, language with double meanings which objectify women. Sexism and media, on the other hand, promote that uh, culture is macho and men are aggressive, women are weak, and it uses vulgar language, cursing words, and objectification of women, promoting women as sex objects. In leadership, language and behavior of top leaders top leaders and public officials promote the stereotype that women and men in patriarchal images and roles influence the public preference. In education, we have already discussed this in one of my other lectures. Language in education, which is sexist, uh, influence the behavior of both teachers and learners, content and pedagogy, promoting patriarchy and masculine culture. This is sexism in education. So what is the effect of sexism? Sexist language may be spoken, written, or may uh, be manifested in other forms of communication, such as images or pictures. So this type of language, sexist language, exclude, excludes women and other genders. They render women invisible and trivial. They discriminate against particular gender, and they oppress or violate the rights of women and other marginalized. What are the effects of sexism? They negate Filipino culture. They violate the laws. They violate the rights of individuals. They hamper productivity and they have the uh, negative impact on development in general. Let's now talk about gender fair language. Uh, a little while ago, we talked about gender fair education. It is essential for us to understand gender fair language because it is essentially part of socialization and education. So gender fair language is a tool in attaining gender equality. This is gender inclusive language that reduces women's in invisibility in communication, uh, in narratives, and corrects gender stereotypes and eliminates discrimination. Gender fair communication, which occurs in spoken, written, and other forms of communication, is one that does not exclude any gender. It does not uh, render women invisible or trivial. It does not discriminate against particular genders, and neither does it oppress or violate the rights of women and other genders. So gender fair language is gender neutral language or gender inclusive language. This is the language that avoids bias towards a particular sex or gender. Government's adaptation of uh, gender fair language policy is a strategy in attaining gender equality. The institutionalization of gender fair language is done through official proclamations and policies by agencies and institutions which is an effective way of addressing sexism in our society. The Civil Service Commission more than a decade ago has issued a policy that requires all agencies to use gender fair language in public and official communication. In our university, we have adopted the gender fair language policy in, uh, in mid uh, 2000 as the Civil Service Commission in accordance with the Civil Service Commission resolution dated March 20, 2005. In uh, 2017 when we when we had the PRIMSU Gender and Development Code, it prescribes that all university officials, faculty members, and non-teaching personnel and employees are encouraged to use non-sexist language in all verbal communication and in official documents, letters, and instructional materials. So there are various ways of making language gender responsive. Uh, in form, you may transform 
a sexist language into gender fair language. The totality of being gender fair of a language should also include the message or the content. So sexism in language is merely in terms of form, but also that it is a form of aggression towards women in general. And this must be eliminated, especially in public institutions. Uh, what are the ways of making language gender fair? Generally, there are three ways. So one is feminization, second is neutralization, and third is a mixture of neutralization and feminization. So feminization of language refers to the process of reclassifying nouns and adjectives, which, which as such refer to male beings including occupational terms such as feminine. This is done most of the time by adding inflectional suffixes. One, we can, we can avoid using sexist language by avoiding the use of generic masculine, uh, which, which includes all humanity in the terms father, ma father, brother, master, man. So examples of which include man or men, working men, workmen, men, men of the street for father, man, uh, manhood to a man, manpower. These are the current common use. And you, in place of which, you can use the following alternatives. Human beings, human person, person, individual. These are neutral terms in place of man because man excludes women. So in place of working men, you have workers, wage earners, men of the street. You can replace that with average person, ordinary person, the common tao. And forefathers use the term ancestors uh, for manhood, adulthood, and maturity. To a man, everyone, unanimously without exception, human resource for manpower. I can also use the terms staff, personnel, labor force. So when you use singular masculine pronoun him, that becomes sexist because it excludes the females. So examples are when a reporter covers a controversial story, he has a responsibility to present both sides of the issue. Everyone packed his own lunch. Um, you can use the gender fair language alternative by making or transforming the sentence into plural form instead of singular. So how do you do that? In the example, you can use you can use the statement when reporters cover controversial stories, they have a responsibility to present both sides of the issue. All students should bring their notebooks to class in every day to class every day. So this way, by using the plural form, you avoid being sexist. You avoid using the singular pronoun him. You can also replace terms ending in man with neutral, with neutral terms to refer to functions which may be performed by individuals of either sex. So example, I will give you the sexist language and their alternative. For anchor man, you just use anchor or anchor person. For businessman, business executive, manager, business owner. For the cameraman, cameraman, camera operators, cinematographers, photographers. Chairman, chairperson, this is the common mistake or common deliberate mistake using the masculine term chairman. It should be you can use chairperson or chair for fireman, firefighter, policeman, police officer, law enforcement officer, salesman, sal salesperson, 
sales representative, sales agent, watchman, guards, spokesman, spokesperson, or representatives. So it is easy to avoid sexist language. Just think of some neutral alternative terms. You may also use the term as though they apply to You may also use the term to or appropriated to a particular sex. You may also use a uh, use terms, use terms used as though they apply to generalized so other examples settlers moved west by taking their wives and children with them so you can use the alternative families or for wives and children people don't give up power they give up anything else first money home wife but not power. Alternative, use spouse or wife, for wife. Use spouse for wife. The generic masculine reflects gender inequality in that women are never seen in terms of general or representative humanity. Men represent the universal or, you, or the human race to which women are um, to which women are the other. Plural, plural form refers ah, plural form preferred unless you know the sex of the teachers or secretary, in which case use the appropriate pronoun. So you can also avoid language that trivialize women or diminish their uh, stature. This is this is this is um, reinforced with the use of suffixes such as s, et, x, trix, which which are unnecessary reference to person sex. Um, they suggest triviality and importance or inferiority of women occupying such position. So examples and their alternative are as follows. You can read them. You can read them with me. You can read them with me. So actress, you can use actor. Authoress, author. Comedian, comedian. Heroines, heroes. Hostesses, hosts. Asherette, usher. Proprietress, proprietor. Girl, adult female, sales, uh, sales girls, salesperson, ladies, women, little woman, the better, better half, uh, the better half, spouse or wife, girl Friday, administrative assistant, chambermaids, hotel workers, ladies chattering, women talking, speaking, Conversing, dykes, gay women, female ho homosexuals, lesbian, bus boys, waiter's assistant. Okay. Are we done?